Olá, bom dia. Uh, hello. My name is Tiago Ack. I'm the Portuguese Bob Ross, the Sunday painter into the wild. And uh, on this Sunday we're going to find some beautiful scenery. Uh, in uh, uh, Portugal we are in Rabide Natural Park. Um, it's beautiful as you can see. It's the Portuguese Cinque Terre, but without buildings. It's just the mountains and the cliffs. Then we got a painting kit with uh, brushes from different sizes. The, the Van Gogh luggage, but every old man needs to have for painting at Sundays. And uh, me, I'm keeping the tradition of live painting, plain air, as the French would say. And uh, today I'm using painting with acrylics on this uh, canvas board, which I primed with um, yellow. Uh, I mixed actually two yellows, a bit of um, lemon yellow and the cadmium yellow. Uh, so it is, um, it is um, slightly less um, minty because the, the lemon yellow was, was too, too cold almost somehow. Uh, and the, the cadmium yellow has a bit more of a tone towards orange. So I, I tone it down. I'm, I'm using this technique to experiment today because um, Camille Pizarro, the French Impressionist painter, or that lived in France at least, he used to paint, uh, he used to prime his canvases with this. And um, before the tradition was to prime them with orange, kind of a golden, a golden shape but without reflection. And um, I'm gonna prime them with um, um, and the orange thing is really good because it um, takes the, the bright side out of the canvas. It uh, gives a neutral tone, which is not uh, white, because painting on white, uh, it can be tricky, because white is um, normally the brightest thing on the, on the canvas. And when we are painting, maybe if we leave some bright spots, it will look, it will jump to the eye really strongly. So it's a good practice, uh, in my view, uh, to have to prime the canvas first with a mid-tone color, like something that is not too dark and not too bright. The traditional painters, they used to um, to paint with, um, they used to prime it with this, um, as I said, with this orange or a golden color without the shine. And I think, I suspect, I don't know, it's because before they used to, they used to prime with, uh, they paint with wood, on wood panels. And as they painted on wood panels, the, um, the color of wood, uh, it already goes through. And uh, it's a good middle tone, so then the brights will actually look really bright and the darks will look really dark. And uh, we have no trickery going on. I'm gonna first start mixing two types of blues and white. So I use the primary blue, which is the cyan, and also the ultramarine blue, which is a darker tone. And uh, I'm gonna start making the sky and the ocean, which are the the things that I don't want stained with more color after um, in the end, because um, it's I don't want to contaminate them with color, with the other colors when I start painting the ruins. But I'm actually gonna make a quick rough sketch with the green, just to get the position of the mountain. They are the Tinda Rabida, which is the Portuguese Cinque Terre. I'm gonna put the green, green and a bit of ochre. And I'm gonna just place those mountains so I can work my composition before I start uh, working on the ocean. Beautiful turquoise ocean and sky. Here water is really transparent. Okay, so how do I want... I like this bay to show here. So somewhat here, but have these trees here, and here, it's cut, yeah. and in here, space for the little castle there. I don't know what is it. Let's maybe cut this mountain to there, the valley. I'm gonna use black. That today I didn't use black, but on this Sunday painting session, 
keeping old man traditions alive. But he's black. I said in the beginning I'll start by the sky, but I'm actually doing the opposite now, as you can see. So, I, uh, you know, these things happen. We have to change, adapt according to what's happening now. And I thought this is wiser because the heat is really strong. But just briefly, I can already know where I'm going to place the sky. Or I'm going to have to clean my brush. Yeah, now I'm going to add a bit. Here, this is really something useful. It's for the paint not to dry too fast and to refresh myself as well. It's very practical. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna add a bit of ultramarine blue to this uh, tree color and a bit of white so it throws it back to the distance. Um, why? Because blue and white are the colors of the sky. So there is the mountains, the trees, plus a bit of sky in between me and them. Or more bits of sky than these mountains and the next ones. So I'm gonna add this color. This is really logic actually. If we think, if we start deconstructing painting in these terms, it becomes something that is like, oh yeah, there it's there's more distance, so it means more air in between, with air, there is no color, but there is this color of the sky, so I add more the color of the sky. Same thing happens with water, and uh, once we start interpreting reality in this manner, it's really cool because we can like almost deconstruct everything. I also have my painter's rag, always have a rag with you, to clean excess paint, when your brush is also too dry. Okay, now I got this mid-range mountain. It has blue, has green, it has also a bit of black. In the end, it's kind of more grayish. It's this one here. They're really majestic, these mountains. This spot is absolutely wonderful if you got the chance to visit this. Even if you're not a painter. Okay, now, for example, I got this color. That I did there, and I see it on the water already. It's kind of slightly more green and slightly more white. So I put a bit more green, a bit more white, and I can already throw this color in the water. Here. It got too gray, I don't know why. So I'm gonna add more green. I think it's because I touched the, the ochre by mistake. The reflection of the mountain in the water. Okay, cool. Now I think I'm gonna just go fast to the sky. I'm gonna ch change to a clean brush so I don't contaminate it. And the bigger one so I go fast because the sun is really boiling hot and paint is drying fast. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna throw some white in there. Just to cover that my orange back, my yellow Because yeah. otherwise I'm gonna have this orange. It was it was attached to there and I think it's a bad idea because otherwise I'm gonna see this yellow in the end in the corner. It's not gonna be well covered. You can tell that the white is harder to, to show because of the yellow background. But I ha I'll have to put a layer or two. And it's gonna play in my favor in the end. Because the white's gonna be really bright. Not going to be left with white from the back. 
back from the pit. So now I, I just added the white there. Put my two blues. I think this is going to be way too much. I can tell already by the amount of paintings in my brush. It's a too strong on that. I'm going to use it on the ocean because the ocean is really good. The kid actually nails it. It's pretty good. This color. So yeah, this is a practice, uh, something that I do. When I don't get the right tone, I see immediately if this tone is close to similar to anything that I'm that is I will need to paint on the canvas and uh, if it's a yes I just jump to it without thinking so I, I, I change plans I adapt immediately so I added a bit of green as well to this blue because I, I saw that area there that that needed that green paint is drying really fast today okay so for the for more further away ocean it's gonna have more um, ultramarine blue, which is a blue that goes more towards, uh, it goes more far away from the green. It's a, a deeper, darker blue, and that's, we call it deeper for a reason because more far away it shows depth of the ocean. And it's actually blue that has more red on it. I don't know if you can understand why, but it's actually to distance itself from the green because green and red are opposite colors on the color wheel and, um, and if you don't want your blue to go to green you have to put it a bit of red to compensate it it's greenness okay so now I'm just gonna dab my brush on white and do these reflections on the water I'm actually happy with how fast this is advancing here in the water it's going surprisingly good and fast okay maybe this was too, too bright here but I have the yellow under it, so I don't know if it's right. It will look correct because the yellow tones it down. It is approximative. The way I paint, you know, it's not the way you should paint. I'm just explaining my thinking process according to, to the moves I make. So uh, I give you some insight on on how and why do I make these choices, you know. It could inform you. My painting practice has been informed by many other artists by watching them paint and also my practice, you know. I've been painting for um, since I'm like 14, but seriously since I'm 19 and I'm 35, so it has been a while. And um, I'm still learning a lot. I learn a lot on tutorials on YouTube. I learn a lot uh, from experience, sometimes I'm doing something, I, I can't figure out why I'm, I'm uh, finding some dead ends and then suddenly in practice I do a happy accident as my friend Bob Ross would say and the uh, painting just reveals to me and I can figure out why that he works like that. Because this type of painting is like intu it's, um, interpretive painting on the impressionistic tradition in pasto, doing everything a la prima, um, going strong, thick paint, painting it on the same, a la prima means on one shot, one shot, one kill. And I really like that, but I don't know, I like to double with thick paint, it just really pleases me how, how it feels. Yeah, I'm grabbing this lighter blue to make these lines on the water that are caused by the wind and the underwater currents. This movement on the water. Yeah, and the brush is helping me actually. Blue. 
lot of white, I'm trying to nail the sky, and the sky always go too blue, so I'm gonna add a lot of white, because I know I have this tendency to do this mistake, and I think my tendency by previously acting. Okay. Let's spend all my white, more white. White is the color. Well, uh, there are some cars skidding there. There's steep hills here, very steep hills. I was saying that white is the color I know I spend the most. Maybe it's for compensation because I just use a lot of paint. I, I pig out on the paint. It's really strong. I know I should, I should maybe contain myself a bit, but I don't know. I like then the textured part of it. Um, yeah, painting is part of pleasantry also, the, uh, of pleasing. Not just contriving myself to like make the painting look how it should look like reality. Because it should, I, I try to get the feeling of this landscape. I don't want to get the total exactitude of it. I just want to get a, a good feeling of it. And I love to watch it after and, and remember like how I painted and how I was like interpreting things and how my brush stroke rep tries to tries to represent some parts that I know that it's not exactly like that. No, I'm tolerant with myself. No, or slacky, depends on the way you see it. Some people, the rigorous painters would say it's slackiness. Some other people would say uh, it's letting loose among the more gritty painters. I don't know, I, I didn't figure out it is how I like to paint, that's for sure. And how I it's, I don't know, it gives me a feeling. I, I always say I didn't choose painting, painting chose me. It's kind of cliche, but this is something that I really feel very strongly about. Because um, I already tried to do more conceptual art and I did some video work, and you can see on my YouTube channel. I have a 52 minutes documentary on the Roma Gypsy Camps in Paris. And uh, I spent three years filming, and I did installations and way more work that is way more conceptual than painting. And I always end up painting because I don't know, there's something that just really makes me hard. Feel sensations that that I don't feel with other mediums. Although. I don't just fight other mediums. Other mediums are really interesting as well. Working with reality, this video work is super interesting. They are like directly connected to reality. Somehow working with images. Here I'm like interpreting reality. I love the paints, the squibbly dibbly. contaminates a lot of the color so I always be aware of not putting too much which I just did so yeah theory and practice are different as you can tell black really gets the things very very strong very fast and I think I'm gonna need to work on that now because I'm really not happy with that so I'm gonna stop this is what I'm doing 
the contest. Or am I not? But then, I'm feeling the flow now. Like, feeling that I should just get this part done because I like it. brush also to draw a bit when I paint each brush stroke is not filling in it's also cutting and dabbling and squeezing paint to the sides so I'm like also drawing with the brush as I'm progressing towards the front line now the light is really changing fast because the sun is almost setting and the lower the sun is in the eyes and the faster the light changes so I actually need to work really fast and I'm using this wet paint on black, uh, wet black stain to, to make some volumes and to gradually make a fade out it's, it's less darker part of it Yeah, it's working really well, like this part. Pick up so it doesn't fall down. You see, so I managed to pull the volume out towards here. And I got the correct color, so I'm gonna wet it so it doesn't dry too fast. Because now I'm gonna have to work on the background before, so I don't touch it anymore. So the things I was working with these dark tones, this part is the the shadow, I wasn't happy with it. It's darker than, the, than that one, so I need to add a bit more black. step back to look what I'm doing from a distance. This is good to do sometimes. I know I'm racing against time, but it's good that I step back. And I'm also going to check the battery on the camera. Yeah, battery is rolling. Look what I found. An ice cream. There's an ice cream tree right here. And there was one just ready to to be picked. It's amazing. I'm lucky man. Okay. I'm sorry for being talking with the mouth full. But ice cream smells fast. Cool. So this brushwork is good. There's some trees here, some canopy with this uh, brighter color. But I need to paint the sand really fast because now light is changing. And light is like life. Once it changes, it doesn't go back. There is, needs to be some fast moves here made by Tiago, the Portuguese Bob Ross. You're a Sunday painter making old man's traditions, paint, painting traditions by young people. So I'm adding brown, ochre, and white. And I'm gonna try to make the sand and those rocks. Okay. It's hard to get the value correct just by eye, but I'm gonna risk it. Yeah, maybe more orchid. The hoo is not totally correct. Then I'll cut it down. Let it be bright. There's little rocks there, happy little rocks. I'm gonna use now to make also that kind of construction 
this is like a fortress. I don't know what the hell is that. It looks cool. And some rocks here along the coastline. There's a bit of sand, a bit of rocks. And here's the main scenes. So I just noticed that the sand is actually the color of the rocks. And it's not coincidental because sand is actually grinded down rocks. And how clever. You can learn something here. Geology lesson from your Sunday painter. So there is some wetter rocks by the ocean. They are darker. It's like wet paint, it's darker. It's dabs. I'm making those boulders that are right on the ocean. Here there's some darker parts. I still didn't figure out what it is. It's rocks. It's in the shadow, I can see them really well. It doesn't matter. Because I don't need to know what it is, I just need to put the right colors in the right spots and the things will appear and reveal itself. There's actually a legend here of um, a haunted castle somewhere on the hills behind there, which has a ghost. I haven't been there, but I'm gonna call the ghost bastards. Bastards, not the bastards. Come solve some mysteries here in Portugal. Okay, bigger brush strokes, mix it a bit of green, make this grass parts that are on the dunes. Cover the things I made previously because they are not placed in the right spot. And here I can't be afraid and hesitant. I have to go strong and decisive. That's really important for painting. Even if it's not perfect, if you go strong and decisive, you know, it will get character. Close to finish actually. Gonna need some details on those houses, which is certainly gonna take a bit of time. But but the main composition is done. Because there is no more yellow parts in the canvas, you know, so everything is covered. And now, from now on, from now on, it's just details. And never neglect the details. The details are very important because they bring the complexity, especially uh, color-wise. You know, I don't know if it's still the battery on. Still on, still recording. Cool. How cool is that? Spend, spend the Sunday here. Sunday afternoon. camera is tricky, the battery stops time to time, I think it's because it's a photo camera and they have some 
restrictions on how the computer can record the video. Okay, now I'm going to start with the details. I shouldn't go too strong on the details because this is a very far away view. And if I go too much on the details, then I start overworking the piece. And we need the eye to let the eye of the beholder to, to make the, the end of the, the rest of the painting. The painting has to be suggestive in my, my view, if you are not trying to paint realism. Because the suggestion of shapes and it still keeps the magic of the paint working on. And yeah, it makes a difference between making impressionistic painting and the realist one. This is the way I paint, and it's not the way to paint. I'm just talking about what I think, what I try to do, what um, happens when I paint. You know, process. Showing you a bit of more of my practice. Some stuff I read. Some stuff I learned from blogs. Some stuff I learned from teachers. And it makes all the Tiago Hacke painting. The, the gathering of all those informations. More white, there's always more white, more white. Add more white. I'm gonna try to dirt it. Maybe it's enough to dirt I have from the blue because those things, those houses there are not totally white. I'm gonna go, just gonna dab some paint in there. Try to get this, the shapes more or less correct. That gives the impression there is some houses down there of Tinda Rabida. There's the Oceanographic Museum. Something that I didn't visit. But it's like those things that you always should visit. Even though you didn't see, you advise other people to visit. Okay, so some white in there. Now I need some uh, roof color for that. The Terra Siena, burn, um, burn Siena is really good to get those because it looks kind of bricks, like Roman bricks, tiles. And uh, it's a very natural color, it looks almost like hurt. And mixed with a bit of ochre. It's a very natural look, it looks like roofs. It's darker. Now I need to cut the houses with little trees, little bushes that are around there. This one here, one here. For the past just a dab of paint. This is the job. One here, one here. Cutting shapes. It doesn't help make things look natural. Without going too much in detail, now I'm gonna grab a black. I'm gonna make it a bit of a grey with 
white and I'm gonna put some bots here and there that are windows, doors, chimneys, balconies, shadows I just dab on the building honestly try to nail it on the spot where I see it but I'm really not worried of being too precise as you can tell because this is not realism it's to grasp the moment grasp where it's the brush should sit ah, it's probably too dark no, actually it's, it's almost pure black and uh, where the shapes sh sit and then it makes them feel what I'm seeing suggestive I bet painting realism from nature must be really hard because light shifts so fast that, uh, that you won't have time to make something those of washes and perfect color unless you are a master already on on putting colors together and getting the exact tones and painting a la prima uh, with realism I bet some people can do that is not what I'm after at all and I just noticed there's one more house there in the middle of the forest yeah I can see you and it also has a and it also has a roof so I notice I clean my brush in between when I change color on the rag Just removal of color, adding up the new color. I really like this quick, fast, suggestive painting. Okay, I don't know if I should put some boats there, or we, because there's only two or three boats, but I think I will. Just for the sake of it, we are there. Let's see how it looks. Grab some white. Maybe there. Okay. Here. And this one doesn't look really white. It has like a more creamy tone. Creamy tone. Here I have more. Follows. And should I put some people on the beach or is this COVID-19 where there is quarantine and there is no people on the beach, the imagined world that actually, actually there is a few people now. Can I just make these trees? They do make a difference on the composition here. You know, there's a moment on the painting that will say he needs to gain some independence from the what is being uh, what he's trying to portray. So there is a moment that I'm trying to grasp it and there is a moment that I'm trying to make it live on its own. And uh, that moment arrives here and uh, so, so I'm going to start to make some little elements added on the composition to round up. For example, these trees are was, they weren't necessary there but I think they look better on the composition because it kind of closes down the ground here, makes it look more natural. Dabbing on my tablet. Okay, my brush is starting to be way too dirty, so everything's starting to become grey. But I'm gonna use that in my favor. So I'm gonna grab some oak tree, yellow, and mix it with the grey and make this part here that is very clean cut. And also these tree tops here, the canopy. Seems correct to me. There we go. And now I'm just gonna throw some people in the beach. Really fast. They look really dark from here. I'm gonna put brown, dark and black. 
away. Everything will go quiet. I just put the way too big. The guy here on water, inside water. Now the clothes that they are I put some whites there. It's really stains of color. This is some blue. So some blue towels and blue shorts. There's also blue there. I'm gonna add some reds and pink because they are there. It's gonna be over very soon. It's red as well. Some red can over here. That's too much, too much. Okay. I'm gonna fix here some tree tops. So I'm more happy with this. They look like olive trees, this one. And let me get the wild olive tree design for it. rocks are not very straight, the part that touches the water, and I'm going to make that straighter because I'm not reading it very well as rocks, because they have to follow the horizontal line, you know, because they are threading into the landscape. Voila, well, I think it's finished. I'm just going to sign it and let you know that I am Tiago Ac, the Portuguese Bob Ross, Sunday painter, young persons, young people making old man's painting practice, keeping old impressionistic style alive in Portugal, plein air painting, and this painting will be for sale. You can buy it on my Instagram or on my Etsy shop. Check out my Etsy shop, it's Tiago Hack Artist, everything together. Hack is H A. C K E. So Tiago T I A G O H A C K E Artist A R T I S T. I think. Sorry if I missed the code. But you'll find the links below on the comment box and on my my homepage or my uh, description. You'll surely find there my links for Etsy. And for my Instagram and Facebook, just contact me and say, Tiago, I like that thing. I'll tell you. Or in, in Etsy, you can just buy it. Without uh, asking me about anything, just saying, it's mine, planning it. And I'll post it to you as soon as I can, in less than one week. You see, light it changed so much. I don't know. This thing that I'm doing, it's actually now on water, but before it wasn't. So yeah, if we don't go fast, reality changes. You know, that's why we need to live life fast, fast pacing.
because otherwise things change and they'll never be the same again. They'll never be the same again. I like this parts in the water that shine. They are really just Cool, I like it actually. Yeah, I'm just gonna go not with this brush, this is dirty. And this guy. I'm gonna add a bit more white, just gonna correct a bit of the sky here. And the um, oh, yellow orange under it, it actually really favored it because now it's sunset and the, the light is actually a bit yellowish, a bit orangey. Really think it gives a sharp contrast. It really works really well visually. Voilà, c'est fini. So yeah, I really like the, the yellow I put in the beginning as the as I told you as the impasto. Uh, I think it really works well. Camille Pizarro yet yet some good ideas here. I'm gonna sign it Paint outside this um, primer of yellow works really well because it's brighter than the orange and it's less bright than the uh, than the white. White canvas can be tricky. Twenty thousand, twenty twenty, and here we go. This is. Thank you for watching. I'm your Portuguese Bob Ross Tiaguac artist. Don't forget to follow me, and you can buy this painting on Instagram or at your Facebook. And have a good day. Good Sunday.